Hey everyone, welcome to the Squawk Out Podcast. This is your host, Joel Benavides. It's 11.37 p.m. on the 12th of September, and we're uh, going to do the uh, the podcast version of the stream tonight uh, with a guest, Raymond Chapa, from the On Call Podcast. And uh, we'll get started here in a few seconds. Here we go. Yo, what's up? You broke up. Stand by one. All right, so uh, we're here uh, on the Squawk Out podcast. Bitcoin currently trading at uh, $10,543 even. Uh, we're looking at uh, Tuck Sky uh, significant trades and the Bitcoin chart, of course, on Kraken. Uh, but uh, standing by on audio, we have uh, Raymond Chapa. I'm going to drop some audio levels real quick. And uh, Raymond, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and then bring your own podcast in? Yeah, for sure. This is uh, Raymond Chapa, a.k.a. Uh, what Up On Call Podcast. Uh, this is a mashup with uh, the cousin of a cousin, I think. We're second cousins, yeah? Correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my boy uh, Joel Benavidez. Uh, this is the first time, I think, that we've actually spoken, probably. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, would say, I mean, we text and shit, but... Yeah. Oh, do you cuss on yours? My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can okay. uh, the, like light stuff, you know, not not the vulgar stuff. I listed I listed as as uh, as uh, damn dude. I didn't turn the uh, how unprofessional of me. I didn't turn the uh, the silent mode on. Um, yeah, I uh, I mean nothing explicit. Uh, you okay. know, like no I mean F-bombs. we. Well, f bombs are cool. Uh, I think, but uh, but you know, like uh, we can't be talking about WAP. Or anything like that, because oh, I do, I don't list it as explicit. <laughs> that's a wet ass paper, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. My wife loves that song. We love that song in this house, dude. It is <laughs> addicting as hell. Um, it's good. Yeah, uh, Megan the Stallion, dude. Like I follow her on Instagram, yeah. and dude, she's. I think, dude. Personally, I think she's gorgeous. Yeah. Like I can't speak on either of those people. But <laughs> my wife, my wife might listen to this, but nah. Like uh, my wife was just saying that she thinks that Megan, Dis- what is it, De Stallion? Megan the Stallion. Yeah, she spells Megan it T H E E. Yeah. Yeah, she said that she like she like fucking she out- or sorry freaking uh, she like uh, outdid uh, Cardi on the on her verse or something. I, I I couldn't tell. I was just like, yeah, I mean. They both sound good. Like it, the it, song is the bassy. It sound it's a good song. Yeah, there's a there's a station. Um, I, I think it's here in Texas. She had a like a like an Instagram video where she does. I don't know if it's a freestyle rap or whether it was like a cover of something yeah. else. But uh, man, I mean, she was just going off. It was amazing. So yeah, like I I know a lot of a lot of people have issues with the uh, the. The, the vulgarity of like uh, late millennial and early Zoomer hip hop and rap. But dude, I think they're doing amazing work, man. Have, have they ever heard of a, a little song by Three Six Mafia called um, <laughs> uh, Slob on My Knob? Have, Slob on My Knob, heard? yeah. But because it's women singing it, it's not okay. Women right. aren't allowed to sing about that. Or have they ever heard Lil' Kim's old stuff where she's talking about those things it, no dude you know, i'm gonna take it underground and old school dude well how about 504 boys do you remember oh, uh um what was the name of that track man you know which one i'm talking big, about uh big booty hoes hot booty well no no that i think i think i think that was two live crew there was a there was a there was a deep track from 504 boys called uh uh something about oh man it's escaping me now that sucks uh, something about you don't have to be you don't have to be my girl or you don't have to be my boo for us to fuck or something like that. <laughs> what is five oh four boys? Yes, dude. I probably I now I can't have copyrighted music on on my shit. Oh no, I'm just looking it up, dude. I'm yeah, yeah. Up. 
Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I won't do, Google it. Do you do you have uh, do you have music on yours? Do you do like non copyright tracks and stuff yes. like that? Yes. So my boy Chris Christopher Royal King, he's given me a number of tracks that I can use legally. So my intro music is usually just um, um, he has a band actually. Whoever's listening, check out Symbol on um, Instagram or check out Christopher Royal King. He's in This Will Destroy You. Um, but he actually gives me music so I can use it for um, – we do a trade-off thing. You know, I send him some ketchup and uh, <laughs> some uh, Whataburger ketchup because he's not in Texas anymore. And, uh, you know, other things, you know, legal things, just, you know, he's in, he's up in California. So, but yeah, Honorable so mentions like this. Yeah, so actually, but he's he's been a big part of my podcast. He's helped me out with like audio questions and he's helped me out like with music and stuff. So any of the music you hear on the podcast, it's from him, you know. So um, but yeah, that's that's the music that I use sometimes at the beginning. Whenever we're on the SoundCloud days, I would just whatever song has popped in my head. Like I was obsessed with this Jewel song for, for a while. Jewel, I like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why but I was doing a lot of drinking back then but yeah, yeah. that jewel yeah. jewel is good for like depressive drinking yeah i wasn't even depressive drinking i was just like man this is a cool song i want to play it and then i'd be <laughs> in a room with a bunch of my drunk buddies and they're like what are you fucking playing and i was just like i don't know but then i finally got some some tracks from him so it's pretty dope um is hip-hop the only thing you listen to are you strictly on hip-hop or do you do, you oh, do no, other stuff dog. i listen to uh whew, man uh, I listen to Old Animal Collective. I like a lot of uh, uh, like noise music. Um, you know, My Bloody Valentine. I like a I lot of uh, uh, old school rap. You know, I'm listening to fuck. I was listening to the Belly soundtrack today. I listen to uh, a lot of droney shit. I was listening to. I like. I listen to this band Glassing a lot. They're really good. They're like. Um, I don't know what you would call them. They're like death metal with a mix of ambient music they're really good I've oh that sounds weird really yeah, I've yeah they're actually um we're gonna do a part two um i have one of them recorded and then the guitar player um he's got some family stuff that's going on so once once that's all ready we're gonna do another part it's gonna be like a mashup with them so uh, that'll be out whenever their album right before their album comes out but um yeah I listen to that, and then I also listen to, um, I don't know, man, like a lot of just noise, just a lot of noise music. Define noise music. Like, I, you say noise music, and I think like Sonic Youth and stuff like that. I listen to some Sonic Youth, but lately I've been listening to like uh, Godspeed You Black Emperor, um, Old This Will Destroy You. I listen to... Um, like Animal Collective a lot, um, their early stuff. And also I listen to, um, I, I, I would say podcasts, but lately I haven't been listening to a lot of podcasts. I'm just, I'm kind of burned out on them. And then um, I listen to a lot of uh, like black metal, like Mayhem and stuff like that. But noise music wise, I guess like Symbol, my boy Black Taffy, he used to be in This Will Destroy You. He puts out a lot of good shit, Black Taffy. Are they um, local or, or regional or uh, anything? He's, yeah, 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 he's from Dallas, so like his he's on uh, he's on a label and stuff. You can check him out. He's a uh, Lil Gatsby on Instagram, but his his stuff's really good, man. Like it's just he's like a DJ, but he also is like really good at the piano. So he kind of makes hip hop beats and he does a lot of screw tapes. Oh, nice he's screw! Really, yeah, I remember screw. Yeah, yeah, he's really influenced by DJ Screw. So he for a while he was just putting out SoundCloud tapes of like him like screwing up like Aaliyah songs and stuff like that. <laughs> so I kind of dig all that kind of stuff. But, and what about you? What are you into? Um, well, you mentioned like old school hip hop and like immediately my mind went to like KRS one and like, oh, I love KRS. and I, and I do listen to some of his music. I have uh, a buddy of mine and we always get together and like, we'll go to like high tones for like, like lo-fi and hip hop shows. And, and, and we mm -hmm. just kind of hang out and talk about vinyl a lot of the time. He was actually like probably, shout out to Cesar Mata. He's in, uh, a, a real good buddy of mine. Anyway, we talk about that kind of stuff all the time. And, yeah. uh, and, and so he, he was the one that kind of turned me on to 
um, he was the one that kind of turned me on to like old school hip hop or at, at least reinvigorated like my interest in, in, in old school hip hop. And, and yeah. so like I got into like, I got back into like two live crew and KRS one and WA and, you know, Dre Snoop, all those guys and, yeah. and ice cube. And then that kind of like went on into like the, the, the later stuff, like Warren G like kind of came a little bit later mm-hmm. than all that. And so, but I mean, he goes back. And so, but lately actually I've been listening to a lot of his like lectures online. Cause I'm not I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate but I think he's got like a couple of like honorary doctorates and he lectures on oh, like Oh no, that's facts. Is that's it facts. is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's I, got I, at least one, I think. Yeah, and so like I'll sit there and I'll listen to the guy talk and I mean he can talk. He and Very I, intelligent, and I man. yes, dude, extremely intelligent. And I think I dude, I think he'll he'll talk to anybody that asks him. So, you know, like that might be like uh like uh like a good target for us down down the road but um but yeah like he has a he has a a video where he's talking to a group of students it looks like in a in a small classroom and he's talking about um about like the illuminati and freemasonry and stuff like that and it's dude like i could listen to that guy and and you read the comments and everybody's like this is completely unintelligible it doesn't make any sense and blah, blah, blah but if you've actually like gone in there and 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 studied this stuff in depth like i was um, a rosicrucian not a not a freemason rosicrucian but like uh like a like an amwork rosicrucian for several years my brother I, got married at the mason at the masons downtown it's crazy. Really? Yeah. There's beautiful there. buildings and stuff like that. It is. Yeah. It, go on. Sorry. No, no, it's all good. Uh, uh, like I said, man, I could talk like once you get me going, oh, I could good. talk. No, you're good dog. Keep going. But, um, but yeah. And so like I did some, some, uh, art projects that were actually modeled after secret societies. There was this thing. I didn't really think I was going to talk about this, but there was this, um, this art project nobody knew that it was an art project that's at the time it it was a billboard that went up on a street called alexander parade in melbourne australia and all all it said was get out of your mind and it had www.neurocam.com neuro as in neurology and cam as in a camera right neurocam.com so i so i i looked into that and there was all these forums of people talking about all this it's like what is and blah 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 and you go to the website and there's it just said get out of your mind and you clicked on it and uh, on the on the logo and it took you to a list of everything that neurocam was not and basically neurocam was like not everything it was like it's not a pyramid marketing scheme it's not a you know this it's not a that it's not a scam it's not you know, an internet club, it's not research, it's not, you know, everything, right? And so, and somewhere on that page, you would click and sign up and they would give you quote unquote missions, right? And for, and it was weird stuff. It was like, you know, lie in the middle of a field and meditate, you know, on the idea that you're dead, you know, and then report back. (laughs) And then, and then it started getting more intense. It was like, uh, yeah. It was like meet, uh, you know, o- you know, operative B on this street at this corner in this time. And then like, it was like a package and like, you weren't supposed to open it, but you were supposed to deliver it to somebody. It's just, it got weird. Long story short, like I got involved in that. Uh, and then I, 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 I jumped during their international phase. Cause they had like an expansion phase where they started operating internationally. Yeah. And so I got into that. I found out the guy that created it was named Robin Healy, but he was working under a, a pseudonym, Robert Henley. And so we got into all that. I got, I kind of jumped up the ranks relatively quickly, found out that it was a secret society slash art project. And it was modeled after a lot of like government and Freemason stuff. And there was like an occult aspect to it. There was like a subgroup. Oh, sh- there was like a military, like a like a like a paramilitary group within yeah. it. There was a, an occult group within it. The occult group was insane. Like I'm pretty much like honor bound not to mention it, but uh, so Oops. I wa- so I won't mention it by name. But like these guys were like doing like really intense like occult stuff, like uh, like I mean like as 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 dark as it gets to put like uh, you know like I, they were they were they were doing transactions with like. Uh, uh, and the spiritual entities that you know by name, you know what I mean? So it was pretty crazy. 
Uh, wait, 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 wait. Pause for a second. Yeah. What do you mean by name? Like the devil, Jesus? What do you mean? Right, like Lucifer, Astroth, Beelzebub, you know, um, oh, like those guys. So, but, you know, there was multiple aspects to that, too. So, did you see any of this? Um, I, I, <laughs> I'm not like, I, hey, dog, you opened up the door. Yeah, I, I sure <laughs> did, dude. You know what? Like, we did, um, like the part of the organization that I was involved in, we were forbidden from kind of like forbidden by regulation or whatever from engaging in that stuff, right? So if we did anything like bordering on like inductions in occults, we had to consult that part of the organization. And so whenever we would do inductions and our inductions, whenever somebody came on board would involve what we called a car ride, right? So they would have to meet us at a certain location we would put a, a like a black uh, pillowcase over their head, and uh, and throw them in the car and take them to an undisclosed location. And those locations would either be like cheap motel rooms, or uh, we had some members that had like uh, pretty respectable homes in the Woodlawn slash King Williams area. And so we'd bring them into those homes, and uh, and and kind of set them up. And then we and then we. Abbott. Was it Greg? No, <laughs> no, no, but, no. But I'll tell you what we did. We did take some interesting car rides, man. Um, we we were approached by a, a local reporter who wrote for The Current and he wanted to get an interview. And I was like, we don't just like meet at Starbucks. So I'm like, you're going to have to meet us here. And we met him at uh, we met him in the parking lot behind Joey's on St. Mary's. You know where that is? Exactly. Yeah. So and across the street from White Rabbit or whatever, the, whatever it's called now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was like a Thursday or a Friday. We met this freaking current, this writer from the current. And, uh, and we said, we have to do this here. And there was like 10 of us. And we put the pillowcase on his head and off we went. We walked him like over to the car. He didn't, you know, cause we told him to be there by a certain time. We were there like an hour ahead of time. And so we saw him show up. We knew what he looked like because of his publications. And so, yeah. you know, in he went and, uh, and so we took him and, you know, we, we took the pillowcase off his head, answered his questions. He never ran the story and, uh, <laughs> and I don't know why, I don't know if it freaked him out or whatever, but, um, but it was interesting. So we've had, we had some interesting people like come along and, uh, and so <laughs> that was just like a really weird chapter in my life. And I was obsessed behind like, how, how old were you when this um, I had just gotten out of the military uh, in 2005. No, two, 2004. I got married in 2005. And then I think this was going on around 2007. Yeah. So, so like 2007 to 2009 is when all this was going on. Um, wow. And then the Have organ you talked about this before on the podcast? Not publicly. No, like I've talked to, uh, I've talked to friends about it and stuff like that. Um, and so, but yeah, like, so we, we did all that, all that stuff and it was interesting. And, you know, when we were inside, uh, having closed converse inside, I say inside, like I say, be like, I mean, behind the walls of the website and our private forums, uh, yeah. we, we had those conversations. Uh, we had conversations about, you know, like we would learn like the occult stuff from them. A lot of Millers were uh, members were ex-military. We had a we had an ex SAS member from uh, the British Special Forces that I actually want to get on Squawk Out and have a discussion with them. Lee, if you're listening, uh, let's uh, let's do this thing soon. But Lee, do it, Lee, <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee. Yeah. So, but I want to talk to him about like the SAS stuff. But. It's, um, I think it's the acronym as I say, yes, I might be getting that wrong, but it was British. I think it was British special forces. And so, yeah, it was just a really crazy, interesting time. I just bring that up just because, you know, initially you had asked about the hip hop stuff and KRS one talks about, you know, like the connections between the Egyptians and the Freemasons and, mm -hmm. you know, the Pharaoh Akhenaten, who was the one that kind of tried to drive Egypt away from uh, polytheism into monotheism. And, um, and of course, after what are, uh, what are those? Polytheism? So, 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 uh, polytheism is the belief in many gods and monotheism is, a, is the belief one. in one God. And at the uh. time, uh, I think he was telling like the commoners that the God was the sun. Uh, but you know, like, uh, the, for, for the elites within the, 
the Egyptian hierarchy. I think it was understood that he was trying, just trying to explain to him that, you know, God is, is one entity and it's within you. You know what I mean? But he kind of gave them an idol, which was the sun to, to focus on. Um, that's a no, no in the Bible. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I don't even think the, the, the Bible was written at this time. This was, uh, this was like, what, when did Akhenaten, he Joel. was like thousands Joel. of years before. What's the up, man? Only, the earth is only 2000, you know, oh, 2020 years don't old. Don't you dare you know? start with that. Hey man, <laughs> I'm just telling you what the Bible says, man. It's only 2020 years old. There's no freaking dinosaurs, you know, even though there's bones everywhere in Jurassic Park, my favorite movie, you know. It's not real, dude. <laughs> dude and well, don't, forget know, earth earth <laughs> don't forget the earth is flat. Don't forget yeah, the earth is flat. Yeah, the earth is very flat, it's so flat, even though, you know, there's it's spinning and, you know, scientists are liars, but, you know, the Bible's true. <laughs> My boy, like, he, uh, he he got into a conversation <laughs> with uh, with some guy at a bar. With, Come he on, was a, dude. He was a flat earther. Yeah, my bad. I'm just playing too, dude. No, I know, dude. I'm just fucking with you. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Flat earthers, like that's crazy shit, man. Dude, so what? What are the? What are the like? Are you a conspiracy theory guy? It seems like you are. You know, like I'm, I'm interested in that stuff, but like not to the degree that that I think a lot of people are. For example, you know, you know, are you familiar with the reptilian? Alien I was theory. just about to ask you that. I asked my boy Alejandro, what's uh -huh. up? He's not going to listen to this, but he um, he was hipping me to uh, the reptilians. And then uh, my other boy DJ was telling me about the reptilians and flat earth and all that stuff. And I'm familiar with the reptilians. Yeah. So, I just... so my belief is that that yeah. entire story, right, with the reptilian aliens and that they're like shapeshifters, they can look like human beings, uh, you know, and they're amongst us, especially amongst the elite. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it literally. I think it's like so many other stories. It's a metaphor for something that's actually going on. And it's something much more rational, like rational, rational and plausible. And that is that the reptilians are not, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's aliens out there that are, that are reptilian in, in, in form, but I didn't invent aliens, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about I'm that. Just kidding. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> You're freaking me out, dude. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. Nah. So it's because so, you can't see me. That's why it's like we're talking on the phone. Yeah, we need to. Uh, we we need I'm, to. I'm we, getting a web. I'm getting a webcam probably in the next couple of weeks. So we'll do a part two of this, and I'll have a webcam. Have you have you done that real quick? Just to take a side step here. Have you have you done that with uh, with with Skype before? Have you had? Uh, oh yes, definitely. I have. It's just. That laptop is my wife uses it for school. So I had to get like, I got like, I bought a new tower and I'm getting it set up. And that's, you know, that's, I have to use just a, a makeshift, you know, monitor that my wife uses for school as well. So I'm working on getting a, either a monitor with a built in camera or just getting a, you know, a webcam. But that's yeah, exciting, dude. Yeah, I, I think, I think the, the, the video is definitely a step up. One, like, but you know, like the COVID thing kind of makes it impossible for us to meet, uh, especially considering that, you know, we both have kids and I'm, I'm, I work in a healthcare setting, but, um, yeah. but it's, uh, it's really fun. I, I don't know. You, you used to do that. Didn't you, didn't you have folks over and y'all did that there? Dude, Yeah. We would do it at my house. It I would sounded go really house. good. Yeah. Cause I've listened to ep your, some of your episodes and it, and it sounded like they were there. So I was like, oh, they're probably there. Yeah. So yeah, what I do is I take my, my setup, which I have a zoom H four N and I also have a, it's like a six or eight output that my boy Felipe Cardenas, Felipe <laughs> that he let me borrow indefinitely. It seems like, cause I haven't heard from him in a while, but I still got it. But yeah, so I would, I just take that with me and I just record right on the device. It's like, I did my research. It's like the best quality sound you can get for a portable recorder. So I just hook up the mic straight in, just get that, get that phantom power going and then just press record, man. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So, uh, where were we, uh, before uh, we, reptilians we, we, oh, were saying you, that? Yeah. Yeah. So I believe that that whole thing, and this is going to probably piss like hardcore reptilian theorists off, but 
I, I believe that the, 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 the story about the reptilians is actually a metaphor for normal everyday people, human beings, right? But our brains, like some people will operate from the frontal cortex, which is this part right here above your eyeballs, the front brain. And people who operate and make decisions from that. Now, I'm not like, like I'm not, uh, by, by no means am I an authority on this, but like I, I, I do a lot of reading. I'm an extremely curious person. And so from my lay understanding, uh, people that operate from the prefrontal frontal cortex, they tend to be more compassionate, more concerned with like connection, emotion, communication, logic, reasoning, that kind of stuff, right? And so yeah. when they when they when they make decisions and when they interact with other people, they're operating from like they have that's their operating system, right? Like they're 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 kind of applying principles and trying to come up with like rational decisions to deal with problems, right? And they're yeah. using connections and 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 networking with other people right but there are other people who tend to operate from the amygdala which is like the old brain back here near your spinal cord and that part of your brain has to do with like instinct survival um you know survival of the fittest and so people that tend to make decisions with their amygdala it's like based off of those five f's so like uh uh, uh flight uh, uh, fright, fawn, uh, you know, the, the, the five F's, I can't think of all, all of them. Right. But it's like an emotionally based reaction, right. Which isn't to say that you shouldn't consider your emotions when you're making a decision, but like, uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's not an informed decision. Right. And the amygdala is kind of like, it's kind of like a metaphor for reptilians, you know, for the, it's, they call it the reptilian brain. So I think that when people are talking about reptilian aliens and stuff like that, they're actually talking about people who make those decisions, like, you know, decisions on the fly, emotionally based decisions. They're people that get irritated easily, uh, that have outbursts, that uh, tend to be more mean, concerned with uh, corporal punishment, those kinds of things. And, and, and the people who are, uh, the humans who are using their, their prefrontal cortex to make decisions, they, they tend to be more human-like and because they're using the newer, more advanced parts of the brain, like, I think they're more advantaged, but, yeah. the, but, but if it came down to a fight between somebody who's using their amygdala and somebody who's using their prefrontal cortex, even though we as humans are using those more advanced parts of the brain, we're going to lose in that fight because, oh, yeah. because, because the lizards, AKA, you know, assholes, are uh, are they're 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 gonna use you know they're gonna fight dirty and so that's what I think the reptilian you know alien theory is really about it's a metaphor for us so yeah. anyway that just to put a period there it's yeah <laughs> no you're good man that's yeah that's what podcasting is just shooting shit <laughs> so my my thing is with the whole coronavirus thing is I believe I don't know it's I know it's out there but. My whole thing that I've been saying is that I think that the cure is going to come whether or not whoever gets elected, whether it's Trump again or whether it's Biden. I think whoever's elected somehow they're going to have like, oh, here's a serum. Everyone take it. Get better. We're I'm done. surprised like, you're even bringing up politics because when we had this discussion, up, I'm not trying to bring up politics. OK, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying this is my theory and I'm not trying to say who I'm going to vote for, who I'm not. But y'all know who I'm going to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, but you know what i mean like that's my thing i think that you know i think it's just politics i believe the disease is real and it is out there for sure but i do believe it's it's all politics oh it's like uh who was it was it wasn't warren buffett maybe it was warren buffett i can't remember uh or somebody um had said it's a famous quote uh never let uh a good um uh, crisis go to waste and I think they said it in in terms of like investment in other words you know when something crazy pops off like 9-11 or or COVID you know and the market crashes that's the time to buy and that's yep. I think that's all they meant but yeah definitely like money politics I think that's all that's all tied in man really interesting yeah. stuff man yeah all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some questions at you. All right, hit me, you. hit me, hit I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna interview you. This is the on call portion. Uh, all right, all right, <laughs> let's go, man. All right, cool. So, uh, where'd you grow up at? 
I grew up here in San Antonio. Um, born San Antonio? Yeah, I was born in San Antonio. I grew up on the south side in the Harlandale district, south side. And, uh, and I was like the only, uh, uh, the only like white skinned, I'm going to say white skin. Cause I'm like, you don't want to say weto. Yeah. Yeah. We could go with weto miklo, you know, you, you, I call, I was called coconut, you know, it's all good, dude. You, but yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, but I just, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up like in the hood of hoods, you know? And, uh, and so I, like, I, I caught a lot of shit for that. And so as a result, I thought that I was like, I, like, I felt like I had something to prove. Right. Yeah. And so I learned Spanish, uh, from my grandmother who we were, you know, it was a, it was a multi-generational home. So I grew up with, uh, my mom raised me a single mom, but we lived in my grandma's house mm. and, That's uh, cool. And so she raised me and, uh, when my mom was at work and I, you know, I, I think Spanish was actually my first language, but I picked up English later. Um, and I just went to school there. I learned to be a hood kid from there. We moved to the Jefferson district, which was similar, you know, it wasn't as, as ghetto, but, uh, it was like horseman Jefferson. And so like, I, and that's where I learned to be a little gangbanger, you know, and I was finally finding my niche with the Mexicanos in the hood, you know, where at first I was getting yeah. shit for it. I was like, um, like getting picked on and beat up and bullied. And so I was like, well, I got to do something by fifth grade. I kind of figured it out. And then we moved to Jeff and I was like, I, I, I think I was like in a, I, I can't even remember, but it was like a sub gang of the Crips or something like that. And I was trying, mm-hmm. I was trying real hard to be Miklo dude. And, uh, <laughs> And so, so once I learned to be a little badass gangbanger, we moved to the north side. We came over here to Homes, but it was like the nice side of the Homes district. So it was like mm-hmm. the gentrified or the new homes in the area. And so I was yeah. like, so now I'm a little gangbanger kid going to like a nice middle school on the north side. And it's like, and now I have to learn to be cool again because I'm being a, like a little gangbanger and all these kids are like fucking, you know, they're trying to be cool by doing well in school yeah. and stuff and like they're that. Freak, they're freaking out when they see some cholo. They're like, right. The some fuck? white, some white, <laughs> white chicken cholo. And so like, I, I think I, I developed and I've talked to my shrink about this actually. Um, mm-hmm. like I developed like this complex where I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna, like, what do I, what do I need to do to fit in here? You know, it was, uh, and I didn't think about it at the time. It didn't affect me, but now that I realized what was happening, I think that, it, that it has affected the way I interact with people. You know what I mean? I'm always kind of like, I don't want to say approval seeking, but I'm always really cautious with a new group. I can do this. You and me, we can sit down, we can have a talk. Um, if, if the chemistry between like friends or people is there, then, you know, it, it works. But every now and then when I get around like hyper intelligent people or like super thug people, like I have that moment of pause, that moment of reflection, like, okay, what do I need to do? to either you know like it not establish dominance but like i need to get my footing here and I w- i've always had an issue with that so that's where that's where i grew up um, yeah and it's also like also just talking around certain groups of people like maybe your little accent will come back whenever you, you're talking to like the old homies or something you know what i mean right you're like, right dude that's funny it, i have a hard time with that well not a hard time but i noticed i do that i'm like what the fuck am i doing <laughs> like even like interviewing or not interviewing, but talking with other people that I don't really know, like I'll start to pick up on their cadences. Like they'll say certain things like dude or man or yo, or, and I'll, I'll catch myself saying it or they'll talk like in a certain way. And I'll like start talking that way. For, like, because sometimes I'll go for three hours on these podcasts. So I'll nice. start picking up their, their lingo or whatever in the talk. And then when I go back to edit these, not edit them, but I just make sh- like, I just make sure that, you know, nothing, none of the sound messed up or anything that like that. And I hear myself, I'm like, why the fuck am I talking like that? I don't talk like that. I don't say those words. Like what's wrong with me? Yeah. It's, it's a trip to hear yourself talk, man. Yeah. I hate it, dude. That's why ugh, I usually just skip through to make sure like, okay, nothing fucked up. The, the sound's fine. But yeah. I, yeah. I used to do that initially with my streams. Like I would, I would stream and then I would record it and occasionally upload it as like a podcast. Of course, like the content, you know, it's price data on, on Bitcoin trading Bitcoin. And, uh, and so it's never, 
it's never the same. So like by the time the, that version of my podcast comes out, it's dated information within a day or two. So I haven't really been able to, uh, garner like large amounts of views per episode, which is why I'm kind of branching out and doing this stuff. That's, you know, that's current stuff, but, um, you, you grew up here as well or. Oh yeah. Just so, to throw um, the same question back to you. Oh no, you're good. I was born at Methodist hospital. Um, born in San Antonio, grew up, uh, I guess when we were little, we grew up like over by Eisenhower, Eisenhower road. And then once my dad got, um, he got promoted at Bill Miller's cause my dad's been working for Bill Miller since my mom was pregnant with me. So, um, so yeah, so now my dad's a higher up at Bill Miller's. He works nice. at the bakery. He's like a director of operations over there. But, um, yeah, so, um, once we went to Eisenhower, uh, we moved to Live Oak and now I stay in Universal City. So I've kind of stayed over here on the Northeast side, but, um, yeah, I grew up in Live Oak and then I would always go over to my cousin's house, Ricardo, shout out Rico. And then of course, yeah, Jay I know Benner, Ricardo. What's just, up, Ricardo? Yeah. What's up, Rico? I have a thing. Every time I burp, I have to apologize to him. So <clears throat> sorry, Rico, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he gets pissed, but I don't think he's listened to these in a while, but yeah. So I would always go and hang out over there on the weekends. And then I kind of dropped out of school when I was 16 and started working full time. So all my days off and my vacations, I would just spend over at Ricardo's house over by Culebra. So yeah. And he went to Jefferson high school as well. He graduated from there. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know, I know Ricardo from, you know, he, like, uh, Ricardo and, and his siblings and his, you know, mom would go over to, uh, Michelle and Bobby's yeah. and we would be there hanging out. And so we would, you know, like growing up, we would, we would bump into each other and stuff like that. And I think, uh, for a period of time, uh, uh, Ricardo and I had a common friend and I don't know if you're friends with Christine, Christine Clark, but we were all kind of, uh, like we didn't hang, we never hung out, but we had her as a common friend and Vanessa Lopez and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't talk to her. Um, I, uh, or Vanessa either. Um, I. It's weird how we have these people in our orbit, but yeah, we never really came through. Yeah, her hubs, uh, Juan Tapia. Yeah, I worked with him, but yeah, we're not on good terms now apparently. So, eh, I don't know. But yeah, I know. Uh, I know Vanessa and uh, Christine. Yeah, because um, it's actually funny. Juan Ricardo and I, and then um, Christine and Juan. They, we all lived together. So, <laughs> oh, nice. For years, like off 1604 and uh, Bandera, for a while, we, li- we all lived together. Then we all lived in the same complex. So, we would see each other all the time. So, yeah. Was, yeah, that's cool. We have a lot of, <laughs> it's funny. San Antonio is not that small <laughs> or not yeah, that big. Not that big. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Nah. Um, so, I, I don't know, just to uh, jump back on here. Yeah, like after. After school, I, I joined the military. I I caused some some trouble. I was a uh, like uh, I was what branch Air Force, Air Force. And you know it's funny, man. Like I see the I, like I see everything going on with the Space Force right now, and uh, and irregardless of what's going on with Trump, man, I would have loved to have been in the Space Force. In fact, I applied for what's going to be a Space Force job now. Um, and uh, like I scored high enough on the ASVAB to get it, but the but the job wasn't available, and uh, and they were like, well, you have to wait three months. And by that time, I was like, nah, I gotta get out of San Antonio. Like like the the threat of moving back into my parents was kind of like looming on the horizon. I was like, I'm not gonna do that. So I took basically the same job, but instead of tracking aircraft above fifty thousand feet, it was aircraft below fifty thousand feet. It was a radar operator. And so there were different avenues in there. I was like star airman for the first two years. And then I kind of, I don't know, man. I like, I just got disillusioned. Uh, 9-11 uh, had happened uh, after I was in for a year. And like, I started kind of getting, and I won't go into the details of politics, but like I kind of started like seeing what was going on with like Iraq and WMDs and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I was like, we didn't have enough information or you know, just something didn't feel right. And so like, I, I became a little disillusioned. And so I think that amongst like, that was one factor, but there were several factors. 
that can, can get into politics if you want, dude. It's I'm just I just don't like to talk about like politics right now. You know well, what I mean? I, mean, I guess yeah, it's not even really politics. It's not even really politics. It's just like geo geopolitical events that were going on around that time, and so it yeah. just didn't seem like uh, like I just I, I just took issue with it, and so that just made me disillusioned. I kind of started. I don't want to say acting out, but I was like, uh, it was, you know, that was one thing. And then I was drinking a lot because the culture in the military is just to drink your ass off all the time. And so, you know, you get a bunch of 19 year olds in a room together, drunk off their ass, bad shit's going to happen. Right. And so some of those things happened. And then after that, uh, I, yeah, I was lucky to, to finish my, my enlistment honorably. I got out and, uh, I used my benefits to, to, buy me and my wife this house and so we've been here uh, i mean we we apartment jumped saving and stuff like that for a few years but we've been we've been here for i guess three years now so and just nice. uh settling in dude into the uh american dream and then COVID hits so yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know man this this shit's for the for the birds for the man. birds so dude i was I, w- I don't know how i like i don't know how well acclimated you are to quarantine but i thought be, being an introvert that i was pretty well acclimated to it but dude after this amount of time i'm like dude i'm ready to go to a club dude you know <laughs> yeah well i mean my wife and i were very like homebodies and stuff like that and you know the only it's i could stay home all the time but like today i was like man i gotta get out like i went to you know i sell vhs tapes online like on instagram so I go and find VHS tapes and I go to little small like mom and pop thrift stores here around, you know, Live Oak and Universal City in San Antonio. And tell me about I that. Just, what's your what's your what's your what's with your uh, your addiction to VHS tapes? So uh, since I'm a kid, my older brother and I, we always would go to Albertsons down the street, which is now a college. It's kind of weird. But um, yeah, we used to go to that Albertsons and we used to go and we'd pick out like fucking Kickboxer or, you know, Critters 3 or something. And they were always rated R. So the, the lady, I, I wish I knew her name. She was an older lady. She would like, well, it's rated R. We have to call your mom. So she would call our mom and my mom would say, what's the name of the movie? And they would say, OK. And my mom would say, it's fine. You can rent it. And we're like, you know, I'm like five. My brother's seven, you know. And she'd be like, okay, cool. And, you know, to rent a videotape back then, it was like 50 cents, a dollar. So we would just put our change together and just, you know, get the tape, get on our bikes and ride home. And we would watch the tapes. So we were always, movies are always, movies and baseball were always in the house. So we would always watch movies, you know, just crappy horror movies, like old kung fu movies, just all those things. And my brother actually kept most of his collection and then he actually started collecting and buying out video stores when everything hit. And I kept my collection and I've been building and trading. What and do you buying mean buying it. out? Like multiple copies of Karate Kid and shit like that? Like 10 no, my copies brother or something? Buy, my brother bought out video stores, like whole video store. Damn. Like blockbusters and stuff? Like like pop and go video? You said you're from Jeff. You, you gotta know pop and go video, dude. You're breaking up. I'm sorry, what? I said like pop and go video? No, like around here, there was like a little uh, video store uh, next to this Chinese food restaurant, Shanghai. Shout out Shanghai, fucking good. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it wasn't, I mean, it had like the little porno section of that. But when they went out of business, they were like, everything must go and nobody was buying anything. So my brother went in there and he was like, well, what can I have for everything? And they made him an offer and he was like, cool. So he brought his truck and he uploaded or he loaded up all the tapes and man, some of the tapes he has are worth like five, six hundred bucks for I one tape. Bad, dude. So, anyways, so like I, we've always just been into movies. Like it's funny. Like I always tell my brother this story. Both of us were living in an apartment together uh, over off Four Ten and Bandera, and uh, <laughs> with both of us, uh, Hollywood Video was going out of business. Hollywood Video. Yeah. Well, not going out of business, but, you know, they're selling DVDs and stuff. And we both just paid all of our bills and we both had like 40 bucks between us. So we bought like 
bunch of groceries beforehand and we had 40 bucks between us and we both blew it all on just tapes and fucking DVDs. And I told Ronaldo, I was like, yeah, we have a problem. And he was just like, fuck it, dude. I don't give a shit. Because that's <laughs> all we We didn't have cable. We would just sit there and, you know, smoke cigarettes in the living room and just watch, like, all these Van Damme DVDs. Like, we had a... We had, like, a fireplace in the apartment, so we had the Van Damme mantle. We had laser discs and DVDs and tapes of all, like, Van Damme. It was funny. La- Dude, I, ha- I own one laser disc, and it's, uh, what's the one with Kevin Costner where he's, uh, he's, a uh, freaking, what, what was it? Waterworld? No, he's, uh, Robin Hood. Oh, Robin Hood, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, yeah. Right, yeah, Just, I have that that laser disc. I'll, I'll give it to you. I don't have a way to play it, but dude, I, dude. I'll take it, man. That movie is so funny because if you watch it at the very beginning, he has an accent, and then at the end, and then he just loses it. It's he's supposed to have like an English accent. <laughs> I wonder if he was like, this is way too difficult. Kevin Costner was all, always like, I mean, he got cool parts. He was a decent actor, but I don't know. Like he, sometimes he left something to be desired. Yeah. Also, I think he's got a good agent. Same with Keanu Reeves is I think they have good agents cause they don't, they don't overbook them. You yes, know what sir. I mean? They don't yeah. give them something that they can't do. Like they're not going to give Keanu Reeves a fucking part in Brokeback Mountain. They're going to give him, <laughs> you know, they're going to give him John Wick. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> what do you, what do you know about Brokeback Mountain, dude? Don't scare me. <laughs> oh no. I like that movie. I like Ang Lee. He's a good director. Do you, uh, do you watch any independent films? Like you, you mentioned that you were into like, uh, like old school, like horror movies and stuff like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, what about newer stuff? Like, do you ever watch like like film festival type films and stuff like that? Um, not necessarily. Um, a lot of my sons too, so <laughs> we watch a lot of what he wants to watch. And most of the time, whenever you know he's not here, when he's staying at a grandparent's house for the night or whatever, I'll usually watch Seinfeld, man, or I'll watch. Um, old horror movies big trouble in little china but um i think one of my favorite indies is probably there's this old movie called some girls there's another one called suburbia with giovanni ribisi um oh man what's another one fucking mind is blank um, i like i like those i like those films that have like a list actors like for example there's a film with uh, matthew modine and callum blue and they uh, they produce together like without like the studio. Uh, oh, and uh, what's his name? Zach Galifianakis is in it too, but he plays like a. Oh. And so it's those three guys, and they play a a uh, what you call it? Like just like a, I think Matthew Modine is the devil, and uh, Callum Blue is like the guy that's like you know being tested by the devil, and Zach Galifianakis yeah. is like a scumbag. Anyway, like they all get together and they made this B movie and nobody knows about it. I'm like, this freaking movie is genius. And it's weird. It's a weird movie because when you watch it, it kind of starts in the middle. And yeah. and by the time you get to the end, you realize that you weren't watching from the beginning. You weren't watching. You were what you started watching from the middle. And by the time you get to the end, it's like you're not sure if you're at the end of the movie or like mm-hmm. halfway past the beginning. It's really weird. It's like a loop. Like the storyline yeah. is a loop, which is like at, at first you don't realize it, but after you watch it like two or three times, you're like, what the hell is going on? It's a brilliant, yeah. it's a brilliant movie. Nobody knows about it. I love shit like that. What's it dude. called again? It's called Frenemy. Frenemy. Okay. I need to check that one out. Like, so to me, I guess I like, like, mm, welcome to the dollhouse. That one comes to mind. I liked, um, that movie Stoned Age, Four Rooms, Rushmore. Rushmore, Rushmore was- yeah. Rushmore was really good. And then also, also, oh man, like Steve Buscemi, man, pretty much everything he was in in the nineties was a, was an indie Jim Jarmosh. He did all his movies were indies. He did, uh, the way the, what is it? The way of the dog? No, go something ghost dog. I can't think of the name of it. It's, uh, yeah, I t- like I said, I took my nighttime meds, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, you're throwing, uh, you're throwing a lot of like deep tracks in there. I'm gonna have to go back and look at them because, like, I rec- I recognize Buscemi. Um, there was a couple of names in there you- where you threw, and I was like, oh, I remember 
bits and parts of that or whatever. But yeah, dude, yeah. it's you obviously have like a look, deep knowledge. Let me look on it, it up real quick. But yeah, Steve Mush- Steve Buscemi. Oh, on the road, based on the Jack Kerouac book. That's a good. That's a good movie. I mean, the book is really hard to read. Very hard to read. It's it's better to listen to it on tape or whatever. I remember I went on this road trip a while back and I listened to it on tape and Tom Waits actually did the voice for it. It was Tom really good. Waits is brilliant. Now I don't I, know a, a lot of his tracks by him. memory, but like uh, my, my old man, my, my, bio, my biological shout out biological. He, uh, yeah. he, he introduced me to Tom Waits and, uh, and he, he showed me, what was it? Uh, Singapore will sail yeah. tonight for Singapore. I was like, what the hell am I listening to? And then I listened to the rest of the album. I was like, there's something really special about this guy. And then there's like uh, local musicians. Like, um, I've heard, I don't know if you know girls in a coma. It's like one of the, one of the Girl biggest. Oh yeah. Yeah. San one, yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest San Antonio local bands, but like they, I've watched interviews on YouTube where they cite Tom Waits as one of their like main influences. And I was like, that's crazy. Cause you wouldn't put Tom Waits in a bag with girl in a coma, but, no. uh, but, but you know, I mean, musicians will pick bits and pieces and by the time they're done, you know, it doesn't sound anything like it. Do you, do, do, do you play music at all or? No, no, no. I took guitar lessons when I was like in elementary school and I just, <sighs> the lady that was teaching us, um, she was doing a favor for my dad because it was one of my dad's fellow managers or area managers or something. And all she wanted to do was just teach us country songs, which is fine. But all the songs she was teaching us were like two chords and she didn't want us to like learn anything else. So finally I was just like, ah, I don't want to learn guitar. So yeah, that pretty- traditional style of, of teaching where they kind of like drag you through the muck. Like, I think that's my daughter, my daughter's playing, my daughter's nine and she's, uh, she's taking piano lessons right now. And at first I supported it, you know, and I, I still do to an extent, like, I mean, I'm not against it, but it's just that traditional style of like music teaching. I understand it has its merits, but it can be really discouraging to certain kids. And I don't think you can put like a blank template on the way children learn. Yeah, but no, I don't play any instruments. I was always a fan of music and still am, but yeah, it's just, I. I don't think I, I got that in me. I don't think that was <laughs> something I was given. But yeah, I definitely. Um, I, I man, I, I want to listen to Tom Waits now. You, you got me fucked up. Yeah, man. It's <laughs> it, th- there's so many times that I want to throw like like some some badass song on, Coffee and I'm and like, cigarettes Coffee and cigarettes is another good movie. Coffee and cigarettes. That sounds that so sounds good, like my man. that sounds like my early twenties. <laughs> everyone's probably yeah did you ever like do the did you ever do the the coffee shop gyms. and cigarettes gyms dude well it's gyms. oh yeah yeah dude i'm sure we were in the same room together on some saturday night at 3 a.m dude i'm sure we were man <laughs> there were a lot of th- there was a lot of crazy ass conversations that went on in those back smoke rooms man oh yeah dude i'm i miss it but i don't i'm glad i don't smoke anymore oh my god i vape i like i, I like i, I vape, vape too yeah, I quit. I quit smoking with Chantix. I thought it was gonna be impossible, and I had like all those like suicidal dreams where they're like, "Oh, just stop taking it if you have suicidal thoughts." And I didn't have suicidal thoughts, but I had some crazy dreams on Chantix. Man, I dreamt that uh, I was putting. Uh, I woke up in my bed exactly where I fell asleep, same time, same light, same everything, and I grabbed the gun from. This was before my uh, daughter was born. I grabbed the gun from my bedside table and I put it in my mouth. And I thought to myself in the dream, quick, pull the trigger before you change your mind. And then in that, like that next moment, I realized I was dreaming. And so I put the gun down and I was like, wake up. And I woke up, same light, same room, same ambiance, everything. And I was like, that was crazy. Another time Did that I was- Did you have the gun in real life? In the real life, the gun was next to my, yeah, dude. So oh I got exactly terrifying. I was like, so I think at that point, that's when I went and I got the safe. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, well, this is like 2000. I can't remember. It was like 2009, 2011. Yeah. It was a while back. That's when you quit? No, I'm saying you said uh, it was before your daughter was born. So I did the math. I was oh, yeah. Nine years old. Yeah. Yeah. It had yeah. to have been like 2010 or something like that. Um, and so, uh, and then I had a dream where I was like wading through a, like a, a vast expanse of blackness 
And then I was surrounded by nothing but like maybe six to eight inches of water on the ground. And I was wading through this water looking for something. There was a dim light, but the source wasn't evident. It was just enough to illuminate that there was water on the floor. And so I was wading through this vast expanse and I start seeing white things on the, uh, like in the water up ahead. So I start walking towards it. And once I get close, I see that it's baby parts. Like, so like a chopped off arm, chopped off torso, chopped off head. And it was just like, and then by the time I got to that, it was like as far as the eye could see, ba like baby parts. So I had crazy ass dreams on wow. Chantix. Like that's legit. Like that Chantix stuff is like no joke. But, but you know, I finished the course. It was like, I stayed on it for six months. I quit. Unfortunately, like I got into like vaping when that came on. And uh, so I don't know, I'll, I'll get, well, I'll get rid of that eventually. But what do you vape? What do you use the jewel or do you use like one of the rigs? I, I have a rig, I have a, a hybrid. So like the, the, the top part has like a, like a tank and then the tank drips down onto, I think they're called RDAs or mech mods. It's like the coil with the cotton in it, the big ones. So, mm. I, so it's like, it produces a lot of vapor. So you'll see it when I upload the video, I'm, I'm uh, the, for the podcast, it's like I'm oh, okay. big ass cloud, check it out. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Those, I, man, I'm, I'm too bad with the upkeep when it comes to those. So I just get like those little handheld, like high salt ones, the little Saron ones where you just take out the coil, put a new one in. Yeah. There's and, decent ones that you can get like, like big ass clouds out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But the Saron ones, man, those are the, those are the mines. I, those are the ones I've been using. I was using the jewel and then I, it's just not enough. Thing. Yeah. Well, no, I saw this thing, and then they say that there's aluminum in them, and then Jewel came out and said that there was, so I was like, I can't do that. It's yeah. like, I smoked enough weed out of freaking cans as a kid. I don't need Alzheimer's, you know? Right, yeah, <laughs> like the like the, the, the aluminum is supposed to exacerbate Alzheimer's, or there's a yeah. theory about that. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But anywho, um, so I guess, did you grow up religious at all? Um, I grew up in a Catholic home, but it was like liberal Catholic. It wasn't conservative Catholic. And Hold I want a second. I need to get the, ch keep talking. I'm going to get the charger for my uh, e-cigarette. Keep that, talking. You're good. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I grew up Catholic. I wanted to, uh, be a priest when I grew up. Uh, like, I, and so like I, I got all into it. Um, I started studying for like communion and confirmation and, you know, I elected to do baptism because at some point my mom decided that, oh, well, I want you to be, uh, to make the decision to be Catholic, to, to be Catholic or to be baptized. So I did. So I, I was like a late Catholic bap baptism. I got baptized like at 13. After, after uh, all that, like I, I, I just, I focused on, I wanted to be a priest. And so I like, I had my own missile. I would like oh. buy I'd buy like uh, like bread, like the like the bread that they give you in church, and I had my own crucifix and my own right. Yeah, I had my own altar at home because I want. I was saying I wanted to be a priest. Yeah, uh, for for a good chunk of my childhood, I I memorized the Bible, um, and then and then at some point somebody somebody neglected to tell me that being a priest involves like a vow of celibacy. And I was like, well, what's a vow yeah. of celibacy? They're like, oh, well you can't get married. And I'm like, why not? It's like, oh, cause the idea is you're marrying the church. And I, I thought to myself, <laughs> fuck that. I like girls, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, and, and we can get into that in a little bit. Like anybody that meets me, like, you know, I'll be friends with somebody for like three months. And then once we get comfortable, it's like, dude, I thought you were gay. You know, I mean, this was before I was, I was married, but like, even now that I'm married, some people are like, oh, I thought it was like a cover up marriage or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm pretty Metro. Like I have like, like feminine, like, uh, like characteristics when I move my hands, when I talk, it's like, is this dude like, you know, yeah. uh, gay or whatever. But it, I think, I think that just has to do with the fact that I was raised by a single mom and like she wanted a daughter and so like her idea of fun was to like have a manny and patty night with me and so we would like like sit down and watch like the like the eight you know the eight o'clock news or or cnbc back in the late 80s and we'd sit yeah. there and you know like push our cuticles back and stuff like that so like, just little stuff like that over time like being around my mom a lot like kind of gave me like feminine gestures and stuff like that and and so like it's not yeah, a bad thing 
Well, I'm not ashamed of it. In fact, yeah. like, like I have gay friends now and they're like, oh, I thought you were gay. Like I had the hots for you, this and that, blah, blah. And I'll fuck with them. Like, I don't care. Like I'll flirt with them. Like there's this, a buddy of mine at work, shout out Mark to Marcus. Um, like poor dude, like he really like was convinced that I was like keeping it on the DL and I was like, nope. Um, but so <laughs> like, but, but I'll still like flirt with them just to fuck with them, you know? And it doesn't bother me cause I'm, cause I know who I am. I know that I'm straight as fuck, but like, it, I, I don't have, pro I don't have a problem with people doing whatever they want. But anyway, yeah. to answer your question, just to put a period here. Yeah, dude, I grew up hella religious. Um, I know the Bible back and forth. And um, I've, I've, I, like I know I at some point I knew the Bible as good as anybody. And, and I've strayed as far away from the Bible as anybody could uh, trade. Obviously, yeah. you know, we're talking about my dealings with uh, with like uh, Satanist occult practitioners earlier in the podcast. And so, you know, I... Uh, I've been all over the map with, in terms of religion, you know, like, um, when I, I went through like a, a one and a half year period when I was in the military where I was trying on religions like underwear, you know, I was like buying Buddhism for dummies and, you know, like all that stuff. So yeah, man, I do. I I've always been fascinated with religion, um, and spirituality. Um, and lately, uh, I, I think that, um, that has to do with like escapism to a certain degree. You know, if yeah. I was focusing on spirituality, I didn't have to focus on, you know, like being a white kid in a, in a, in an aggressive Mexican neighborhood or, you know, the fact that I came from a single mom or that we were poor stuff like that. So I don't focus on that stuff now, but like, I, I, I strongly believe that people who have like a huge, uh, predisposition towards like like occult practices and 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 like hardcore spirituality you know krishna that kind of stuff like have this this uh escapist element associated with it and that's it yeah and you know i i envy like my mom and a lot of my friends and family members that they have like this faith and that they believe, you know, I, I really, I really wish I had that and I lost it and I don't know if I'll ever get it back. Like I pray, but I pray out of meditation. Like I pray as I do my breathing exercises to, to meditate. You know what I mean? I pray yeah. for my son. I pray for my, well, I pray for my wife first. I pray for my son, you know, and then as I'm doing my seven eleven breathing, you know, then I start like, you know, slowly just fall asleep. You know what I mean? But it's... <laughs> You know, I lost my faith. <coughs> I lost it probably uh, when I was in my like, like everybody does when you're in your early, late teens, early 20s. You know, I was traveling for work a lot. And then I kind of started coming back to it because I was very addicted to drugs. Like I was doing a lot of coke and doing a lot of oxy and Vicodin and stuff. I was in Damn, a really dark. real shit. I was, yeah, I was like snorting and doing all that stuff. I was in a really dark place. And, um, I kind of started like, I had to my, like coming back to God or Jesus or whatever the fuck you want to call it moment. And I started like going back to church and, and then I was going to church, not sober. And then I went back out of town and I'm like, made a, made a deal with God. Like I, was, I did so much Coke. I did probably like an eight ball bag plus a couple teeners and probably like three hours. And then I took a bunch of volume so I could fall asleep. And I was just like, God, if you're listening, if you get me out of this, I won't ever touch Coke again. And I haven't touched Coke since. <clears throat> so, you know, that was when I was in like my early twenties. So I didn't, I haven't touched Coke since, but you know, I, I started going back to church and like my church and I felt like I wasn't welcome there. You know, I had a bad thing with this guy, uh, Don <laughs> Craighead, fuck you if you're listening. <laughs> he told me not, he told me not to come in and I had been going to that church since I'm a kid and he told me not to come in because I had just gotten off of work at, from Taco Cabana. This is before I started traveling and stuff. I had gotten off of work from Taco Cabana not too far from the church and I just came straight from work and it was a bad night. Like I was tired. Like I was very like in a bad place in my head and he told me I couldn't come because it, it smelled and looked like I was partying and I was just like, man, fuck you. And I like walked off and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I needed to be in here. So once he was gone and I started going back, all they talked about was money 
and all they talked about was at the time they were talking about um I don't remember it was some election or something they were talking about politics I was just like what is this shit man like I was like they're talking about money and politics like I'm trying to escape that yeah so then after that like I still believed but I stopped going and then stuff happened with my wife I've talked about it here on before but I'll talk about it again and then once my son was born I started praying and I was just like you know what maybe there is a god like you know I didn't pray a lot but I did pray when he was born because he was born a preemie so <clears throat> My wife went into um, psychosis. She had really bad uh, post-traumatic stress or not. Uh, what is it? Um, postpartum depression. And then right. she's also diagnosed bipolar two, and she hadn't slept in weeks. So she went into psychosis and she was in a hospital for a week. And I lost my faith then and I haven't gotten it back. And it's not that I lost <clears throat> it. It's just just i don't think i'm gonna get it back because i think i do believe i do believe that we all have a soul and you know i do believe in you know energy and i i believe that in my head i was tell my wife this to make it a little lighter got all dark i think it's like that movie ghost you know what i mean i think it's like you know whoopi goldberg and ghost we're all just gonna <laughs> kind of go to a good place and everyone else will just kind of go somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah. I'm well, just... you know, if you follow, like we were talking about KRS one earlier, you know, he makes mention yeah. in some of his lectures that there's no such thing as evil in the heart of man and that we're yeah. all basically good. So, but then he says, what's wrong with people? And it's like, you know, people have depression, people have uh, illness, you know, there's, there's other factors, environmental factors, uh, genetic factors, chemical factors, stuff that kind of gets in the way. But if you dig into the, and I think this is a, an exact quote from Karis one, if you dig into the heart of any man, it's good. And so I, I think you're on, on the spot there, man. That's a really harrowing story. So what, I mean, what happened after that? Like, oh, I mean, so is that where you're at now or? Oh, so once my wife got out of the hospital, um, you know, it was a little rocky. We moved in with my parents for a bit and <clears throat> it was a little rocky, but you know, she's back, you know, she's been back that happened, you know, in 2018, you know, so, you know, we were both in therapy, you know, she's, um, talks to her doctor. She's down to just like one medication and maybe one, you know, anxiety med if, she, if, or when she needs it, just kind of take as you guys have tech. talked about this on the podcast before, right? Oh, at nauseum. Yeah. 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 Well, you know <laughs> what? Just, thank, thank your wife. You. Well, yeah. but thank your wife for me for, for, for allowing you and for continuing to, to share that. Cause I did, I think that there's a lot of people out there, you know, that, and that's why I mentioned, you know, me going to a shrink earlier. Cause I think mental health is, is still to a degree stigmatized. You know, it's it way is. easier to talk about having a shrink now that, you know, half the people out there are going to therapy, but, you know, there's still a lot of crazy uh, judgment that goes on with, with, with mental health. There is, man. And it was, you know, and my wife will, she'll, she'll, she'll say, you're welcome. Like she's, she's very open to talk about this and, you know, it's, you know, I felt like I, I, I did lose my wife. You know, I lost, I lost my Sarah while trying to get choked up <clears throat> i lost her while she was in the hospital and i called my brother and he wasn't at a good place at the time when i called him because I, I was at thanksgiving and that's like sarah's favorite holiday because she loves turkey you know she loves to get down and i was just i couldn't go so i was waiting in the parking lot of the hospital till i could see her and i just called my brother praying because i can't i couldn't pray i couldn't do it anymore i was just like this isn't doing shit so i call <clears throat> sorry I called my older brother and he doesn't really at the time he wasn't really like praying or anything. He was going through his own stuff. And I just called him like pouring out tears like, brother, just I need you to pray for me right now. He's like, what? I was like, he was like, dude, we're at the dinner table. It's like and I was like screaming, not screaming, but I was crying. And he started praying for me and he was like, are you all right? And I was just like, no, but I'm OK. And I just like, I love you. He's like, I love you. And then I went and saw my wife and then, you know, but now she's good, man like to to speed it up yeah she's good she's um you know she we both both of us kind of don't have a therapist at the moment but we still talk to our doctor and we talk to her about our problems and stuff and she keeps up with our meds we both share the same doctor which is kind of cool um so we talk to her and then you know she makes sure we have the right meds and 
checks in on us and all that stuff. And then my therapist, I was going to him for a while, but oh, you know how healthcare works. So oh, yeah. we're kind of paying out of pocket. So I haven't heard from him in a while, but supposedly he's supposed to reach out to me and yeah, we'll see how that goes. But well, yeah. you know, and if you know how to like, I don't know to what degree I'm supposed to be not, but you know, if you know how to work the system and many people do you can extract more benefits out of it but oftentimes that involves well trust me papa i'm doing it uh <laughs> yeah well daddy i knows. mean that's good daddy yeah. knows <laughs> speaking of yeah. which real quick i wanted to no well, it's a little out of context earlier we we're talking no, about kids earlier we we're talking about kids movies you know because because of your son and uh and I, I was just thinking when my daughter was two, that's around the time that Frozen came out, or maybe it was three or four. But I was like, all right, you know, freaking another Disney movie, another princess movie, but let's go see it, right? Yeah. And uh, and and I remember like uh, the the dad hysteria over Elsa <laughs> after that movie came out, right? And I don't know why it, came, it popped in my head, but earlier I had seen a meme with like. Elsa and she's got like a joint in her mouth covered like in tattoo sleeves and she's like in a like a like a hot like like tight band shirt and I was like oh Jesus I was like you're taking me back dude and I I dude I was like I I didn't look around at the other dads but I remember thinking it's inappropriate for me to feel this way at or like to be having these thoughts about a cartoon character in a theater so I don't know. Yeah, she grown. She was grown. Dude, Kristen she Bell's was grown. Grown, dude. I'm talking about the cartoon <laughs> character. I don't know about the voice, but I was like, this is there's something not right here. Thanks. Well, I don't know if it was Disney or not. I think it was Disney. But I was like, man, this yeah, is yeah, it's Disney. So shout out to Elsa. Hey, shout out to Elsa. That's uh, <laughs> Kristen Bell from uh, all the Kristen Bell movies. I can't think of any. Uh, Saving Sarah or what is it? Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah. No, I thought you were going to say Sarah Silverman. I was like, no, nah, that's Wrecked Ralph. Yeah, no, 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 not her. Yeah, my son's into Shark Tale right now. He's into all the Cars movies. He's into. Shark all Tale the toys. was really good. Shark Tale. Dog. Dude, if you haven't, if you haven't gotten your little one on, on Surf's Up, you need to, you need to do. Oh, I need to, I need to put him on that one. That that's one, dude, one. I had her watching that on constant. That's such a cool movie, dude. And uh, Jeff Bridges, man. Like it doesn't, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter whether he's coming out like on, on, on surfs up or freaking Tron. Like he's always like the, uh, the, the, like the masculine father figure. I think he's like a, like a very like admiral, especially with everything going on with Hollywood and like pedophilia <sighs> and stuff like that. Like it's like, I don't, I don't think he's like in that circle, which is really relieving because like, dude, like Tron, while we're on the religion, while we're on the religious track, like Tron is basically like like the 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 creation myth mixed in with you know christian mythology you know what i mean i love that movie dude tron legacy oh dude have you seen it no i'm not i've seen the original back in the day but i haven't seen the new one no yeah dude that one is really yeah i saw the original back in the day too you you gotta get on it dude so dude this is i gotta check it this was fun, man. I'm glad. Like, I, dude, when I saw you go live on Instagram earlier, I was like, "Oh, Raymond's going on. Let me, let me, let me drop in on him." But I was pulling into, or I had just pulled into my buddy's house, and me and him were gonna have a chat, and uh, and he was coming out, and so I had to drop out on you. I don't want to. I don't want you to think like I was. I was like splitting, but I just. I had. I had just walked into something else, and so I had to drop out of your, your live. But I'm, dude. I'm glad that we hooked up today. This was like a. Kind yeah, of like dude, a random sure. impromptu thing. We're I, we're running on one hour thirteen minutes. If you want to wrap this thing up, no, we can keep going. We're good. Um, yeah. So I don't but, know. Uh, Do you have anything else that you want to? Um, no. I was just gonna say. Um, you were talking about that Tron Legacy. Yeah. Um, and then I was gonna say. Um, I guess what movies are you into right now or shows at the moment? Dude, like, uh, you know, with everything going on in Netflix, dude, Away. I've always been like a big space nerd, so, yeah. so uh, Away. I can't think of her name, but like they they play like uh, the astronauts that are gonna go put the first boots on on Mars, and that is just a brilliant show. I was like, I binge watched all ten episodes, and I never away. binge Away. Yeah. So, uh, and then actually, like the like the the backup scenes have. 
her talking to I can't remember one of the one of the female astronauts uh, that was on the International Space Station while she was filming that movie. Uh, they brought her into I can't think of the actress, or I have to look it up. But uh, they brought her into Mission Control, and 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 they had a conversation with, uh, or she had a conversation with the the girl on the International Space Station. I'll I'll look her name up. It's appropriate for me to look up um, these people's name, but yeah, dude, it was, it was really, it was a really good. So that's what I, what I watched recently in terms of like favorite films, I guess, uh, like I, I kind of liked, uh, not to poke a, like at the, like a, like at the sour subject, but like train spotting Requiem so for good. Requiem for a dream. Uh, Aronofsky, man, dude, all like all the drug movies from the back in the day, that like the oh, tr- tragic yeah. drug movies, uh, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Like there was something about like a good film, a good classic film from that era, having to do with like tragedy and drug use. That's just, yes. I mean, it's dude, it's nuts. Hunter S. Thompson. Have you ever seen Where the Buffalo Roam with Bill Murray? That's like the first Hunter S. Thompson movie. And Bill Murray plays Hunter S. Thompson. No, no, I haven't. I don't even know who Hunter S. Thompson is. Like, am I missing like a huge piece of the story oh, here? Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. Oh, Hunter S. Thompson. oh, yeah, 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 the yeah. author. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, so Johnny Depp plays, you know, Hunter S. Thompson. And then um, also- It's been a while, you know, so you'll have to forgive me. Oh, no, me. you're good, you're good. I just, I read all of his shit when I was going through my druggy phase. So <laughs> him and the Brett Easton Ellis, I read all their stuff back in- my early 20s in a hotel room in Kentucky by myself doing coke so it was fun <laughs> snatch fight club yes. i don't know did you ever see snatch oh hell yeah. yeah did you ever see lock stock and two smoking barrels oh man it's been a while but i did but it was like i was probably like high at a party or 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 drunk <laughs> off my ass somewhere same same kind of thing you know what i mean i just went through that one once i didn't become obsessed with that one um uh, old stuff like dude i could watch uh and i forced my daughter to watch this already she i was like you're old enough sit down um uh, uh the good the bad and the ugly that's a with, good one with dude. clint eastwood yeah dude i'm i'm kind of uh, all over the place i'm not that deep into the trivia or the names but like i'm kind of all over the place I, I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't like like i mean I, I mean obviously like i'm not gonna get excited over bring it or like some like uh like teen movie i guess the only teen movie that i think is like classic and worth watching is um is clue clueless 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 yeah fast oh. times is still still holds water it's still pretty good fast times i'm not familiar with it fast times at ridgemont high no nah, i'm I, i'm i'm dude like i said like i have like some pockets in my cultural education oh no you're good you should check it out though it came out in like the early to mid 80s it's got you know Jeff Spicoli, it's uh, Sean Penn and Sean Penn, dude. Judd I was Reinhold. obsessed with with Sean Penn's thing with uh, what's her name, the Mexican actress that played uh, the the drug runner, where they went and met El Chapo. Um, I... No, uh, Sean... Who play- she plays a drug runner. Yeah, Sean Penn, El Chapo. Oh, and he did that Kate, interview Kate... with. Chapo. Yes, Kate Del Castillo. Oh yeah. Which, by the way, she's freaking gorgeous. Sorry. Wait, dude. you, you le- you're you're like a you're like a communist dude, or not a communist dude, uh, but you're like a very. You like Oliver Stone? Can I ask you that? Well, okay, let's talk. We can talk about that briefly, right? So, like, I didn't mean to bust you out. No, no, no. That's cool. That's cool. We could talk about that. So in. I like this, man. This is fucking fun. Yeah. Let me dude. know when you're tired and want to go to bed. That, well, that's cool. Let, well, let's finish up with this. And then if you want to uh, comment on anything, I, I didn't have any format prepared ahead of time. But yeah, uh, 2010, um, you know, I was out of the military for a couple years. I had some experiences when I was in the military. Some friends handed me the Communist Manifesto. That was the start of it. We would go to like, we went to this bar in Austria that was like a basement and like the walls in the basement were like, they were brick walls that were blown out from like world war two. And it was posters of Che Guevara. The bartender had Liberty spikes. So like, and then like, I think that was the day that my friend Janine had handed me a copy of the communist manifesto. She said she handed me a copy of the communist manifesto and Mein Kampf. 
by Hitler. And she's like, this is, you know, these are, you know, banned books. Like, you know, she was into banned books at the time. I was like, I'll check them out. And so I read them cover to cover. I read the communist manifesto, which is an easy read. It's a small book. And then, uh, and then I didn't read Mein Kampf cover to cover cause it's a huge book, but Man, I, but I, but I did, scary. yeah, but I did look into it and you know, it was scary because I found myself agreeing with a lot. If you read Mein Kampf and you take away all the like nasty racist genocide stuff and you take his ideas about governance and management, like there's a lot of populist ideas, which when you take that away from like the stuff associated with like Trump, racism, you know, you know, under an American light, Mein Kampf is just as dirty as it is under a German light. But when you look at it stripped of all the ideology, all the, the secondary associations, it's a really intriguing book. And I know that that's like really edgy shit to say, but, but I, I, I seriously mean without any of the genocide stuff. With oh, the, the, you're you're brown, man. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna cancel you. Well, <laughs> well, I'm half brown, you know, so that kind of so puts me. Uh, so am I. So both of us make a bean. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll ride on that. Yeah, that, that, that two half two two white skins can can make a spick. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so now that there's one of us here, yeah, it was it was interesting, and then. And then I read the communist manifesto and that kind of went in the back of my head. And I, I was like, I'll, I'll process that later. A couple years after I'm out of the military, I start getting involved in, uh, the socialist party. I'm like, well, let me see, you know, if there's any avenues for me to explore. And I got involved with the, with the socialist party. I became a member some months later, I was the vice chairman of the socialist party of Texas, which is a chapter of the socialist party, USA, SPUSA. And, um, and so I was getting involved with the internal politics and the internal dealings of SPUSA and 2012 is coming up. The green party has ballot access in Texas. The green party, everybody knows is, uh, the, the, the third party, the, the, the closest third party to the Democrats It's left of the Democrats. And, uh, when you look at the platforms, the party platforms, when you read them, from SPUSA and Green Party, it's the same freaking platform. Like it's almost exactly the same. So I, you, I don't know who copied who, but it was very similar. And so, uh, Green Party reached out to these smaller third parties, you know, Socialist International, SPUSA, and they said we have ballot access. We don't have enough people in our party to fill all the positions that are going to be on the ballot in 2012. Do you guys want to stand with us? Because at the time Occupy Wall Street was going on, all these different towns were having their own Occupy movement. We had Occupy San Antonio and Occupy Bear. There was Occupy Austin, you name it, right? And so everywhere in Texas, the, the Green Party, the Texas Green Party reached out to these third parties and we went and we we i applied to 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 run on the, you know i was a i applied for jp at the time they you know there were some positions that required some kind of legal education but like the state representatives and uh like small judgeships like justice of the peace those didn't and so a lot of us went on those on those platforms i ran for justice of the peace uh precinct two place one in here in mm -hmm. bear county and, yeah. uh, and I was, I was shocked because after I applied, I got, I can't remember if it was a phone call or a text or an email, but Robbie Vasquez shout out, uh, judge Vasquez, uh, hit me up and he said, let's meet at Joey's, which was coincidentally the place we started the podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> Where I was like abducting somebody in the, in the back. We, uh, <laughs> we met at Joey's and, uh, and we had a beer. I had a beer with the with the with, with our justice of the peace, and uh, and he said this this race, you know, this race that we're doing, you know, he's, first he's established common ground. He said, you know, I know what the Green Party is about. You know, I'm a Democrat. We have similar beliefs, similar party structures, you know, and he, you and I are going to run against each other this race between me and the Republican is going to come down to one point and you're going to take it from me. And then we're going to end up with a Republican over there 
for who knows how many years. He said, I need you to withdraw from the race. And I was like, man, I can't. I like, I, I said, I, I, I feel you. I understand what, what you're saying and I sympathize, but I also have this, you know, I personally, I believe that, you know, we should, we should have as many parties on the ballot as possible. You know, there should be as much choice available to voters as possible. And so, you know, that's the whole Ralph Nader argument. You know, Ralph Nader came into the election, I can't remember, with Al Gore and stuff like that. And that's why Al yeah. Gore lost and stuff like that. So I, I, I felt him. He said a couple of other things that I was going to... I was think Gore lost because of the electoral college, but go ahead. Uh, what, well, I can't remember it was Nader in the, in the Bush election, but Nader, you know, there's a theory that Nader hijacked one of the presidential elections. Right. And yeah. so like, I get both sides of the argument. It's a complex political issue. Right. And yeah. so, so I was going to, I was going to agree to it. Right. I was really tempted to agree to it. And he said a couple more things. Like, I think. I think he, we started talking about uh, camp, not campaign contributions, but he wanted to know how much money I had spent, and uh, and some of that information was publicly available, like the money that I had spent on like signs and stuff like that. But some of it was not at the time. Uh, uh, data hadn't been locked down the way it is now so he couldn't you know use party resources to go and find out how, how many ad dollars i had applied on uh google ads and facebook and stuff like that and he was really curious and he thought that i was i think he thought that i was running like a covert social media campaign which was rare in 2012 yeah and and it was still poorly understood and so i think somehow he got the party to throw a, the local party a decent amount of money towards his campaign because he won but but he won a ahead of the democrat by a lot um i can't mm -hmm. and, and by a lot i mean like five or six points don't quote me on that but it was way more than the one percent that he thought it was gonna that he told me that it was gonna come down to I got a yeah. decent amount of votes. I think, you know, after a year, after all the votes had been counted, all the final numbers had been tallied, I, 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 think, I think it was like uh, two or three. I got two or three percent of the vote. He got two or three percent of the vote ahead of the Republican. But I think that worked out to, I don't know if it was like 3,000 or 5,000 actual votes. Um, so it was like really cool to have done that, to have that experience. I'm glad that he got into the judgeship but uh, and i'm sorry that i had to make him work so hard for it uh but i think that it's important to have those choices so i had that experience i was you know i was able to run uh on the ballot not a write-in my name was on the ballot so it was extremely exciting educational uh after that i kind of started seeing what was going on with the party and, and I really thought about like this whole third party thing. And I thought about like the, the, the Democrat thing and just the whole structure of politics. And I, I realized, no, you're good. And, and, and I realized that, that we don't have enough bipartisanship. I grew up, you and I grew up with bipartisanship in, in politics that does not exist anymore. You know, yeah. there, there are no rational people on both sides of the aisle coming together to find common ground or to at least compromise on, on a workable solution. There's a lot of, I don't know, in my opinion, narcissism that's going on. And it's like, it's just vicious politics. That's simply put, it's vicious politics. And I don't agree with what either the Democrats or the Republicans are doing, but it's kind of like a stalemate. Like if they don't, and it really began with Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich took the Republican Party into like uh, like hair pulling, eye gouging fight mode, right? Yeah. And in order to survive, the Democrats had to do the same. They they had to kind of like you know up the ante a little bit. And so we're in this state of of politics that you and I didn't grow up in, you know. And I think that it started with Newt, Newt Gingrich, uh, but. So it's just, it's out of control in my opinion. And I can't like stand by and I don't know, just like, I can't condone it. I can't condone what's no. going on in politics. So I'm, I don't know. I'm with you, man. Like it's, 
everyone says like you have to change rules, but I mean, and your vote doesn't count. I mean, let's be honest. In Texas, the vote doesn't count, but the last time I checked, Texas is pretty, pretty, pretty soon to be a swing state. Right. The last time, I checked it, which to me, I'm like, man, that's awesome. But also, you know, I, you know, I'm a registered Democrat. I don't, I don't care what anyone thinks. I am says. too. Yeah. Yeah. I have card carrying Democrat. I don't care. But um, <clears throat> you know, I'm. It's like I'm a Democrat. I'm gonna vote Democrat across the board. Like that's that's how I want my party to win. You know, I don't agree with the Democrats right now, and I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Biden. But you know, I loved Obama, even though he didn't do a lot of things that he said, and a lot of the times he didn't do a lot of things he said because he wasn't allowed to because congress was all republican and they wouldn't let him do a damn thing like his health care thing would have been so amazing if they would have let him do it but they didn't so now we have what we have and it well sucks. it's like with the with that with the hedge fund manager you know i i do i do this financial stream from time to time and so i st- i read a lot of like financial guys and ray dalio is the is the former uh, uh manager and founder of bridgewater associates which is the biggest hedge fund in the world and he's a really what regardless of whatever you think about hedge funds he's a really brilliant and practical and 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 to some degree i think kind man and he's got a great book out but he talks about how politicians end up in the hot water that they're in and they actually according to ray dalio start out as decent people with the highly principled decent people with amicable you know uh goals you know like that i mean they're they're trying to do good for the world but they go into this system this political system that's extremely toxic and they have to play the game of politics which is it's a it's a dirty game i walked out of my meeting with judge vasquez i don't want to say feeling dirty but realizing i guess uh, what you're in for uh, to 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 a lesser degree, yeah. Uh, like I mean, but I I I just I think I realized that that there were these kind of decisions and compromises being made at the very lowest levels of electoral politics, and I I I felt bad. I felt bad for for the system for the the conditions that they have to operate on. It's not what we were taught in school. It's not a simple best man gonna win the vote kind of thing. It's all fucked up dude it's all fucked up so that's why even if bernie was to have won you know he would even had to been get his hands dirty you know what i mean yeah no matter who the president is it's they're gonna have to do things they don't want to do to get a compromise to get a vote for what they want to get so they can you know do this or do that it's just you know it's exhausting i i i check the news i check npr probably once once a day and i just check to see what's going on make sure nothing crazy's happened usually it has but i try to keep away from coronavirus and trump just for my mental health right you know what i mean because i my my blood pressure will rise and <laughs> my, eye, my eye will pop out of its socket like fucking you know total recall but yeah it's you know it's it's definitely a different time and it's just it's a little scary, but also I always tell my wife, like my dad always told me this. Cause my dad and I, the only thing we can agree on is like my son and baseball. That's like the only thing. And the only thing my dad and I have ever been able to bond with is like baseball, but cause he's very conservative, you know, and that's, you know, I, it does, I used to get into so many arguments with him, but now I'm like, oh, I don't care about politics. I do, but I don't like, there's doesn't matter who the president is inside my house nobody's gonna tell me what to do but my wife (laughs) you know what i mean yeah like it's just i'm not gonna raise my son we're not gonna raise our son to be some kind of racist like hearing dirty things and you know it's it's not gonna happen you know it's in my head now like i don't think as like oh i'm I'm mad at the government kind of thing i am but i'm also thinking like you know what i need to provide and do the best i can to give a good environment to my son and that's what i'm doing like you know i'm not you know i'm not trying to take god away from him or anything like that you know we try we pr- we try it's hard because my wife and i are very not very religious but we try to pray before meals and he usually just likes to say amen <laughs> you know 
and uh, stuff like that. But if he's into, you know, if he be, if he's a Republican, I'm still gonna love him. You know, it's not. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna be. But but I I, I just it just scares me, but it also makes me want to be a better father. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, I'm really, I'm really, uh, happy to hear you say that. I was really curious about, about when I, you know, when I talked to our, our cousin, Justin, uh, shout out Justin, but Ben, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but like I was, he didn't really go into detail and I don't want to push him, but I was really curious. I'm like, well, I wonder why he's, you know, holding back or, or whatever, but, uh, I, like, I'm really pleased to hear you, uh, go into detail. I know that that's, uh, a lot f- f- where it goes against, uh, some of the things that you set out to avoid and, and it's a difficult subject to talk about, but I'm glad that, that, that we discussed it. And, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're approaching it from a practical angle. Cause that's rare. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not afraid to talk about politics. It's just I try not to get too into politics because number one, I'm not versed enough in what's going on. I, I'm I'm very versed about what's going on. I just don't like to talk about it because I get very passionate and I get very angry and I start saying things that I shouldn't say to offend because a, a, a few of my listeners are very conservative and very Republican and I don't want to offend them. But then again. I kind of do, but I don't, you know what I mean? But they, they, they wouldn't care either way. But I honestly just, I just, I'd like to keep it light, but honestly, like if I feel passionate about something, I'm going to talk about it. Like I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't mute myself. I don't try to edit myself in my head. I just, you know, I just kind of say what I want to say and that's how it goes. And this kind of organically turned into us talking a little bit about politics and there's nothing wrong with that. I've never voted for a Republican in my life. I've always voted Democrat across the board. I think people I think the- are going to judge if they're if they're prone to judge and people are going to be practical and understanding if they're prone to being practical and understanding going back to the reptilian amygdala mm. prefrontal cortex thing <laughs> and uh and 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 there's nothing that we can do about it and if and if you hold back or maybe not even hold back but you know if you're if you if you attempt to censor so that you're not disingenuous it could come off as disingenuous and so, Ooh, but, yeah. but, but I, but for me, that filter runs really strong in person in these kind of mediums and conversations. I'm like, you know, it's, it's always easier to say crazy shit when you don't feel like anybody's in the room listening to you, but then, yeah. you know, but you know, then it goes out and you're like, oh shit, 50 people listen to this, <laughs> you know, or yeah. whatever. So it's like, oh, it's tough, you know? But honestly, like that doesn't bother me. I'm not doing this because to make money because I think I've made, like I told you, five bucks and I've been at this on for over a year on Spotify. But yeah, I have similar, I have a similar bankroll in uh, in the audible (laughs) thing. It's like, oh great. I got five bucks in ads. Yeah, this way we got to You got to put out the t-shirts, dude. You got to get those, um, G strings with the, with the on call podcast on the merch Uh, store, dude. I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm trying to tell you, I need to come up with more coin selling these tapes so I can, because i'm i am talking my wife and i were talking um we want to get some like underwear made i want to get some more shirts done i just need help with some design like i got a design guy but he's kind of you got to put out podcast episodes on cassette tapes dude i bet you they will go like hot cakes dude you know it's funny you said it's funny you fucking said that because i went to a thrift store today and i was like man i want to start because i i buy cassette tapes all the time like of my friend this will destroy you symbol he put out a cassette tape i bought it my other boy black taffy i bought his cassette like i buy cassettes because i have a cassette player you know in our we have one of those record players that has like a cd record player and then cassette player i listen to the tapes all the time and i was thinking i was like you know what i want to record or i want to put a podcast on tape and see if it'll sell because i bought blank tapes at the thrift store today and then i i fucking eyeballed a um i eyeballed a uh, tape recorder a brand new one at Walmart. I was like, man, I was like, Sweet. I could do this. I could figure this out. But yeah, it'd have to be a short one. But <laughs> yeah, man, dude, like if you, if you want, I'm down. But uh, uh, I wonder if there's any like places where you can get like custom logos put on like a, like a cassette tape. That'd be something to look into. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I think I know a couple people. But yeah, I, I need to I need to quit fucking around and just start putting out more merch stuff. It's just hard because I have, you know, my, my handful of designs, but it's, you know, I got to sell them first and, you know, 
it's hard to sell them sometimes because I pretty much have to drive around and sell them. But uh, Frankie actually told me that um, I could um, put like put my stuff up over at Chacoyaso and that uh, they'll sell them there for me. So I need to just quit bullshitting. And then my wife, she like folded them all. So I need to like package them nice and pretty and put price tags on them and just go drop them off to Frankie. He said that once they're all sold off or whatever, he'll uh, give me the cash money. So. Shout out to uh, Choco Yasso on uh, yes, best, best fucking candy store in Texas. Dog, that I'm not even saying this because he's my cousin, but man, that shit is so good. My wife, she loves those oatmeal cream pies. Oh my god, those are fucking. Have you had those over there? I, I, dude, I've never actually been in the store. I've had his product before, but I've, I've never actually been there, and I need to. My bad, Frank. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'll make dude, my way in soon, but you yeah. gotta get the chocolate, the the oatmeal cream pie, dude. It's so good. Oh my gosh, oh so good, man. Right on. Well, um, dude, I'm gonna take us out because I gotta be at work in three hours. So I oh, need, sh- so I need to get some shut eye. Uh, but uh, dude, we should do this again. This is super fun, and it worked out. I, I, I would say that you have a fo- a voice for for radio uh, a face for radio, but I actually saw your <laughs> face today, and it's actually like pretty halfway decent. But you do have the voice, dude. You have you have a good uh, a good radio voice. Oh, I appreciate it, man. So do you. Well, no, I don't know, dude. I don't know about that. My noise, my voice is pretty. Why nasal. you gotta be like my wife, bro? You don't like compliments or no, what? No, dude. I'm just <laughs> humble, bro. I'm trying to be humble. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, well, yeah, man. Let's let's do a series of these, man. Yeah, I'm 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 down, dude, and we can get we can get other people in here. I I, I dude, I think uh, Justin's been dragging his feet, but we're definitely gonna do that, man. We need to get him. We need dude, to get him, dude. That's the boss, man. She's calling me up to to the sack, so that could be good or uh, bad, man. Okay. All right, man. Well, let's uh let's head out here. Uh, give me a minute. Let me uh do a transition, and then uh, we can bust out. Thanks for listening to the On Call Podcast and Squawk Out. Uh, this is Joel Benavides and. Raymond Chapa, right on, and uh, and we'll 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 continue this. It was fun, it was a little impromptu, a little experimental, uh, but uh, I don't know. I had some fun, so uh, we're gonna get out of here for my bit. Bitcoin currently trading at ten thousand five hundred forty-six and ninety at one eighteen a.m. Central Standard Time on the thirteenth. I'm Joel Benavides with uh, Squawk Out, Raymond Chapa with uh, On Call Podcast, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. Peace, peace.